I wanted to ask you, first of all, John, in your book, uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From are from Venus, you say, men are motivated when they feel needed, while women are motivated when they feel cherished. And I know that sometimes in a relationship with a man, women don't fully understand this dynamic, and I wonder if you can expand a little bit more on that, particularly in the context of dating. Well, when you need someone, you give them a sense of mission and purpose. And biologically, when I as a man feel needed, uh, it stimulates the hormone testosterone. And it's very important for men to have this hormone testosterone in order to bond with a woman. And often women are afraid of looking at needs. And many modern women are like, I'm, I'm self-sufficient, I'm independent, why do I need a man? I like to have a man, I want a man, but I don't really need a man. And the difference between wanting and needing is, is a bit subtle, but the distinction is when you want something, you go after it. It's a goal you achieve. When you need something, it's receiving. It's something you need to receive. And it's a receptive, it's a receptivity. And often women are concerned of appearing needy. And nobody likes needy. And mm -hmm. I have an example to define the difference between needing a man and needy. Uh, my wife comes. Uh, my wife says, "John, I need you to be come home at seven o'clock to help set up for a party we're having, and you need to do the drinks." And so I'm arriving at seven thirty, let's say. And in one scenario, a needy scenario, I come in the door. She says, "I can't believe you're late. You didn't set up this. I had to go to the store and pick up the drinks and do it all myself." That's feeling a need for me, but not appreciating what I have to offer. That's needy. But needing is I arrive late, and she goes, oh, he's here, he's here. Oh, my goodness, we still need to get the drinks. Would you handle that? There's such mm. a distinction there. One is I need you, and you have what I need. And the other is I need you, and you weren't there for me. And that's very subtle distinction. And for many women, it's hard to discern because the last thing a woman wants is a needy man. Uh, it's such a turnoff to women. She assumes a woman who needs him will be a turnoff as well. But the truth is, if you think about it for a moment, let's say you're really hungry. What do you need? You need food. And if someone gives you food, you feel really, really happy. And this is the secret that every single woman needs to know, is if you pursue a man, basically... You're meeting his needs. He's going to bond with you less. If he pursues you and meets your needs, then he will bond with you more. It's kind of a bottom line with guys, which is the thing they're most attracted to in a woman is feeling that he can make a difference. He has the power to make her happy. Now, the truth is no one has the power to make you happy. You know, that's an inside job. But if you're feeling somewhat happy and fulfilled inside, a man can make you happier. And that's a distinction that's really helpful as well. Otherwise, on days when he's not there for you as you wish him to be, you tend to blame him, and that makes you needy as, a person, as opposed to a person who can get what she needs in her life, and what he provides is something extra. That sense of I've got something, he gets something extra from me, frees you from feeling so dependent on him, but in a healthy way, dependent on him to make you happier, to take you from happy to really more fulfilled. Mm. Yeah, and I do think you're right, John. This is a tricky area for so many women. I think so many women have a tendency to be so giving and so generous and to want to give to men in ways that don't necessarily foster those kind of romantic inclinations and perhaps if they give too much too fast too soon in whatever way, that can actually take away a man's motivation. Would you agree? I completely agree. I completely agree. There's a phenomena which is if you give a man what he needs and he didn't earn it, he tends to become lazy. Now, mm. if he if he he gives something to you and then you give back, then he feels really I earned that. 
and you know I did something I accomplished something and her response is to what he did rather than her giving him in order to get a response of love from him he gives to her she responds he now feels successful look what I did let me give you a you know this is again it's turning things around can be rather challenging at first so let me give an example which is a little bit separate so we have some objectivity to it research has shown that men who didn't have to earn their wealth become playboys they become drug addicts they their self-esteem is is they feel very insecure and can't make a commitment it's because everything was given to them they don't ever gain the confidence that i can do it myself they may appear confident but they tend to not be able to make a long-term commitment they tend to become more indulgent they tend to have a higher risk of going to rehab and so forth and this is because they didn't really go through the steps of building their confidence that look what i did look what i did so there's a subtlety and i'll say it right now to bond to, to have a man bond with you messages that say look what you did are very powerful positive messages so here's three phrases now i'll probably remind you of this at the end of the call but when you're dating you want to have the right messages and three messages real simple you can write these down but you're talking to a guy uh, first of all you want to make sure that you as a woman always talk more if he listens to you he bonds with you if you listen to him he bonds with himself and I know that's mm. confusing because if I listen to a woman she bonds with me so a woman assumes that if she listens to a man he will bond with her but he doesn't men bond with that which is in front of them that they feel I did that I made her success I successfully provided something for her and I got to know her I go into her and what I find when I go into her when you listen to somebody you're getting into them uh, is a happy fulfilled person that's the secret and so here are some little messages that you can give him he'll never get tired of it you can do it several times and, <laughs> and when he's talking there's a pause and you, go, you say that makes sense this is like a magic phrase it seems so simple but you'll notice his posture shifting that makes sense he'll his chest will come up his chin will come up he'll he'll kind of wonder what did i say but he'll like that <laughs> it's just like it's like a man saying to a woman i love you or tell me more what else you know what else do you feel when a man draws a woman out she feels heard understood and closer to him and when a woman in a sense appreciates responds in a positive way to what a man says or what a man does so one simple thing is to simply say in a, in a conversation to bring it back to you you first say that makes sense and then come back to something you want to say as opposed to say tell me more you want to always make sure that you're talking more than the man and if he's quiet that's okay but get him to talk a little bit ask a question he talks a little bit don't ask another question instead say that makes sense I remember when something like that happened to me or that reminds me of or you know basically begin giving him more information about you and your life and so forth uh, my daughter calls that uh, TMI too much information is actually a good <laughs> thing for a guy to bond with a woman and the f next one is um, that makes sense another one is oh good idea and it's amazing what it does for a man when from a female tone of voice oh good idea I'm trying to connect with my feminine side as I say that <laughs> <laughs> but there's such a delight it, you know that that a woman can communicate it's pure femininity it's receptivity it's oh good good idea another one is, is uh, that makes sense and the third is whenever you sprinkle it out there you go oh you're right men love that men love to be right and and certainly a woman might like to feel that makes sense good idea or you're right but it's much more powerful when a woman says those things to a man you're not going to appear weak to him you're going to appear wise to him you're going to appear appreciative of him you're going to appear as though somebody that he can contribute to and make a difference now often 
when women have low self-esteem, they can correct that, but you need to know the signs of low self-esteem in a woman and the signs that a relationship probably is not going to work out is that when you feel, as a woman, that he needs you and that you feel within yourself in order to feel worthy of love, that you have to give it. That's a sign of low self-esteem. High self-esteem is he's lucky to be with me and he does, you know, he's, he, I'm checking to see if he's worthy of my love as opposed to trying to prove your love to him. And look, I can give him this, I can do this for him and then he'll be happy with me. That's you pursuing him. You want to create a dynamic where he pursues you and then it's fine to pursue back in the same amount or a little bit less. So it's a subtlety, it's a balance. And, you know, you can always go a little off balance and come back the other direction. There's no perfection here. But you think of the man is like the sun and the woman is like the moon. The moon only lights up when the sun shines on the moon, then the moon reflects it back. But if the moon, if the woman becomes the sun, then what typically happens is she's pursuing him. He becomes lazier and lazier. He less, he, he doesn't bond with her. And today, there's such a challenge for women in relationships because there's more women, in a sense, pursuing the men who have a job. So many men are without a job. And Mm -hmm. so when you find a guy with a job, there's going to be several women pursuing him. And so suddenly he goes, oh, I could have this woman or I could have that woman. And so he's not as motivated as men used to be when there were more men pursuing women. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting. There was so much there, and I'm sure many of you are going to want to listen to this interview again to catch all of that. I just had this flashback when you were talking about how if a man is talking so much about himself that he tends to bond with himself. I had this flashback, John, to a relationship that I was in on and off again for about 10 years, and this man and I would have these very long conversations, a lot of times late at night on the phone, for hours and hours and hours, and he was a lot of fun to talk to, but he talked all the time about himself, and I listened and I gave and I loved, and I wondered why his romantic feelings never really developed for me in the way that I hoped. That could have been one reason there. Right, well, you became a friend and also, you know, somebody who would listen to him, but it it <clears throat> it, it, it it seems counterintuitive, I, and this is why understanding that men and women are significantly different in certain ways. And, you know, I know for some women it's kind of like, well, wait, why isn't it just the same? And let me give a little example of that, which is that when I feel successful as a man, testosterone goes up. When I'm listening to my wife and I feel like I'm helping or supporting her in some way, then my testosterone comes up. Whenever you're achieving a goal, uh, when you're making a difference, when you're solving a problem, when you're contributing... That is a testosterone producer. Now, another, and that testosterone is something that men require ten times more of than women. Now, that's a that's a very uh, at least ten times more. Some men require fifty times more testosterone. They're going to be guys who become policemen and firemen and soldiers. They want to feel like they're really making a difference and risking their life. Uh, but bottom bottom line, based upon his genetic buildup. Men require 10 to 40 or 50 times more stimulation to say that they are uh, a success. And it's a woman's love that can really make a man feel successful. You know, if he's not a, a, a policeman or alpha male, he's not running the company or whatever, uh, his energy can start to drop. But if he's in a relationship with a woman who who responds to him like what a hero he is and what a great guy he is and you're so lucky to have him in your life. Uh, it's so wonderful to spend time with him. It's your happiness. You know, I really like being with you. I had such a fun time the other night. Oh, that was such a great movie or that play we saw. I didn't, that was fabulous. And another way to show love for a man, uh, which is more powerful than saying I love you, is I love that show. I love that movie. I really had such a good time. When you say that, that actually goes more deeply into his heart than if you say, you're such a wonderful man. Uh, you're such a caring, considerate guy. Uh, those kind of phrases, uh, 
They're not bad, but they don't register big time. It's more like what does a man do for you or what did he provide for you? So the bottom line is if my wife, if I take her to a movie and she says, wow, that was like the best movie I ever saw, on an emotional level, most men will feel, I wrote that movie, I directed that movie. <laughs> they take credit for it. And and that you know, often leads to women thinking men have, quote, big egos. And <clears throat> from that perspective, we do. And and there's it doesn't mean he can't give you what you need. Uh, you know, from a man's point of view, we don't say women have big egos, but what we say is that women have so many sensitivities. But that's a, a woman's need is to feel seen and heard and and prioritized. And like you started the show out with, women want to feel cherished, that she's she's VIP, she's number one, and 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 men have to earn that right. And a woman doesn't want to feel that she has to earn a man's love. So you don't realize that a man does need to earn your love. If he doesn't feel he won you over, that he faced a challenge and was successful, uh, and he did it, or if you're happy with him, it's because of something he said or did or contributed to your life. He needs to feel that response from her, and when he feels that response, it builds his confidence. And unfortunately, when we talk about confidence, many men are lacking confidence today. You know, we're Mm -hmm. dealing with a different species of men, and it's not a bad sign. It's just you have to be aware of it, is that there's a kind of reversal going on between the sexes these days, which is as we gain a higher sense of consciousness and awareness of who we are as people, and as our individuation process increases, what happens is men become more aware of not just their masculine energies, but their feminine energies as well. And women, as they grow in consciousness, become more aware of their accessing their masculine qualities and masculine energies as well as their feminine. So in a sense, we're more whole than we've ever been. We have access to both sides of us and and more primitive environments. Men were sort of just all masculine. Women were all feminine. But now we have more of a balance within ourselves. But when we're stressed... Now that we have access to the feminine, men tend to go too far to their feminine, just as women can relate to going too far to your masculine side, feeling independent but end up feeling alone, not being able to connect back to the softer, tender side of you. So times have changed, and we both need to feel masculine and feminine, but our challenge is for men to stay more in the masculine as their feminine comes forth. They have to be even more of a man, so to speak. And for women, as they access their independence, their confidence, their competence, their ability to make money, their ability to you know, have education, all of those qualities strengthen the masculine side of you. Your feminine side has to be even stronger. And, and that means the ability to appreciate the ability to forgive the ability to accept the ability to ask for help and asking for help is to receive you know the art of receiving is what women have to focus on and you're so good now at the art of giving okay you've spent thousands mm-hmm. of years learning how to give but now the art is how to receive and and in, you know when you're more competent in the work world you have a lot more to give but that the challenge is coming back to receiving and we can talk more about that Yeah, I'd love to talk more about that. One thing that really struck me so much here, John, and thank you so much for sharing so generously, one thing that really struck me is that it's important to recognize that for a man to really develop those romantic feelings for a woman, um, we need to give him that opportunity to feel those testosterone boosters that you were talking about and for him to feel like what he has to give or what he has to provide is something that is going to be received by a woman and appreciated by a woman. And one of the challenges that I know I had and many women have is that we work so hard in a profession, in our professional lives, in our careers, we become very successful and very independent And we get into this environment, and I think this is what you were talking about when you're talking about how some of the um, roles were changing and how more women are in the masculine and more men are are in some feminine energy. But we get into this very independent 
um, mode, this very results-oriented mode, which might serve us really well in our careers or in our professional lives, but it doesn't necessarily always work so well in our romantic lives. You hit it right on the nail. Nicely, nicely said. And, you know, just this whole idea of needing a romantic support, um, ironically, men don't know how to do this, and men never knew how to do this. They know how to do it, you know, sometimes in the beginning of relationships, but they tend to, it wears off very quickly, and then after they've been in a few relationships, they kind of go, well, that didn't last, so why even go there? So I'll say that, you know, that happened to me, <laughs> which is I'd been, went overboard being romantic in a few relationships that didn't turn out, and I think, uh, you know, at a certain point, I went, why even bother? It doesn't turn out. So you kind of, mm. men start getting a little stingy with that. They don't realize that one of the greatest gifts they can give women today is to do things that a woman will feel are romantic. And why is romance more important today than it's ever been? And that's simply because when you're more on your masculine side, you need to become more feminine. One of the most feminine experiences is romance for a woman. You know, romance is anything he does that says you're special, you're number one, I'll take care of you. And in a sense, they're like little rituals, like I'll open the car door for you. And certainly you can open the car door yourself, but to have somebody open it for you makes you feel special, allows you to relax more, and it's really nice. And, mm-hmm. and you kind of have to – it's an awkward thing because you go from being the CEO or the boss and I'm in control and I can do everything myself, I do everything, to, oh, isn't it nice to have someone do something for me? And that's the way of looking at it. Oh, it's so nice for you to organize this for me. And, you know, one of the things we have to – what we have to sort of uh, make romance practical and realistic is we have to look through some of our illusions. The the romantic illusion, kind of the fantasy that can never stand up to reality, is that a man's going to know what you want, know what you like, and do it for you without you having to know and without you having to ask. Mm-hmm. So it's ironic that, and again, it's a, kind of an irony, is that women think that he's supposed to know, but actually, practically speaking, he can't. And the second thing is... If you let him know what you like and you even ask for what you want, um, it doesn't kill the romance once you become comfortable doing that. But there's sort of this uh, Disneyland romantic idea that he's going to just be a mind reader and know. And it certainly doesn't seem to be as romantic right away. But when he actually does it, does what you'd like for you, uh, it starts to stimulate the hormone oxytocin in high amounts which is the romantic hormone. And one of its attributes is when you feel a man's being romantic, this hormone oxytocin gets produced in a woman, and that that's what women need more of, as well as estrogen. When you're kind of like looking to a man to do it for you, that stimulates estrogen, and if he actually does it for you or you anticipate him doing it, then that stimulates oxytocin. And oxytocin and estrogen combined make you very happy. Whenever a woman is stressed, either her estrogen levels are low or her oxytocin levels are low. Whenever a woman is happy, her estrogen levels are rising, her oxytocin levels are, 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 are at a good, healthy level. So there's, uh, the, you need these two hormones. A- estrogen says, I need someone, I depend on someone. And, and oxytocin says, that someone is here. <laughs> so you're right. getting what you need. Uh, they did a study, you know, back about 15 years ago, this word oxytocin became very popular, uh, this hormone, uh, because they found that women only can feel happy and stress-free when oxytocin levels are at a normal, healthy level. If oxytocin is low, women have high stress levels. So oxytocin became known as the hormone that lowers stress in women. Then about 10 years later, they discovered that if you don't also have estrogen levels at a reasonable level, then the oxytocin doesn't work. And when you're in a relationship with a guy, uh, a partner, your estrogen levels will rise. And estrogen is associated with needing and depending on someone. Uh, if you feel I can't need or depend on someone, your testosterone levels rise. And when your testosterone levels are rising, your estrogen goes down, 
then the, the, the little things a man can do for you don't provide as much happiness. And when, you, when your oxytocin can't lower your stress because your testosterone levels are high, then what happens is you start becoming overly uh, picky. You can be overly dissatisfied. Uh, you find, you know, even though you're witnessing it, you go, why am I not happy? Why am I getting picky? Why am I being judgmental? Why am I being critical? I don't want to, you know, feel this way. But it's kind of inevitable if your estrogen levels are not rising. So to have estrogen be there, you need to give yourself permission to, to need a man, to not have to be independent. You can be independent, so to speak, during the day and then, then realize I'm looking <laughs> forward to not having to do it all when I get home. And that's a huge transition uh, to make. It takes some time to develop that. And as a dating woman, what I would suggest to overcome this tendency to become overly picky, uh, overly judgmental, overly critical that puts up a wall is to make a, a specific uh, intention that I'm going to date men who are not a perfect, who are not my soulmate, but I'm going to, if I can say this, use them to uh, increase my oxytocin. But I'm not going to demand that they be the ultimate soulmate for me. Now, let me explain why that works. Uh, if you were to come to my, if you were shopping for a house, and you came to my house, you wouldn't be able to enjoy it. Uh, you know, if somebody comes to my house, I just had a couple of guests today, and they were saying, oh, my gosh, what a beautiful house you have, and look at this, and look at that. And that was their response. But if they were buying the house, they go, oh, this is a beautiful house, but let me look in the basement. You know, let me look at the cracks. Let me <laughs> let me see, mm -hmm. you know, how the plumbing works. You know, you're going to suddenly become uh, vigilant, hyper-vigilant to, to sort of see what's not going to work. And if you don't, if your expectation is I'm not going to buy this house, that hyper vigilance that this could be the wrong person, uh, this could be a person who hurts me, this could be a person I can't trust, this could be a person who's not good enough for me, that hyper vigilance actually puts up a wall and increases testosterone because you're protecting yourself. And when you're protecting yourself, your your male hormones increase rather than your female hormones increase when you feel there's no danger. And certainly when you're looking and picking for a long-term relationship, there's a danger of picking the wrong person. So if you just kind of go, my phrase for it is to create a series of positive dating experiences because it will be more positive if you're not expecting them to be perfect, but you're having a good time. And basically part of having a good time is coming back to the point I made before which is being clear about what you like. Never ask a man what he likes. Uh, I mean, you, when I say never, it's just don't do it that much. <laughs> but the bottom line is focus more on what you like because if he can provide for you what you like, then you will feel happy to be with him. And when you're happy to be with him, he will want to provide more for you. If, if you're doing what he likes, uh, then he tends to just have a good time, but... But he doesn't feel like I was successful in providing a good time for you. So there's mm -hmm. a, you know interesting book, uh, which is Men Who Like uh, Why Men Like Bitches. That's a popular book from many years ago. And, and part of the whole message in that book is something I've been teaching many, many years as well, which is that what makes you most attractive to a man is your authenticity. And the authenticity is the, I have to add a caveat to it, the authenticity of your female side, not necessarily the authenticity of your masculine side. Let that be shown more in workplace. But what are the parts of you that you don't show in the workplace? Let that part of you uh, come forth in your relationship. And in that theme of why men like bitches, it's, it's um, you know, it, the, the concept there is a woman who's true to herself and she's not afraid of being herself. But it's not a woman who's masculine who's dumping on a man or trying to do everything herself. It's the flip side of that is she knows what she likes and she asks for what she wants. And she doesn't do what she doesn't like and she doesn't do what she doesn't want. That's the message of that book and that's the message I have seen again and again is that if a woman 
uh, gives up herself to please a man. If a woman does something she doesn't want to do, doesn't like to do, doesn't feel ready to do, doesn't feel comfortable doing before she's ready, then she's doing a gift to him for sure. It feels loving, like I'm doing this loving gift. But really, I'm coming from a place of trying to please him, and then maybe he'll please me. And you've got to reverse that. He has to please me, and I respond with happiness. And my happiness is actually what pleases him the most. So that's a mm-hmm. lot to, to think about, what I just said, but I think maybe helpful for some people. Very, very helpful. Very, very helpful. And I think that the, a distinction you're making here that's really important is for many women, we might even have lost track or not really even be in touch with what our needs are. And you're making a big distinction between knowing and expressing our needs in relationship to a man and being needy. And I think that's a really important distinction. Yes, it is. And uh, in that dynamic is when we're talking about romance is what would you like to do? You talk to a guy, you just say, oh, gosh, you know, this concert's coming up. I'd love to go. Will you take me? That's a phrase. You know, not Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you. It's not what would you like to do or do you really want to go? Don't even go there. Just really what you want is even if you – Let me say it differently, is quite often women are concerned and afraid of saying what they'd like to do because maybe he'll feel obligated to do that and he doesn't really want to do that. That, That's like a real concern, whether you're in a relationship or you're dating for a while, uh, you're married even, is that women often don't express what they would like to do because they're afraid their partner will do it out of an obligation, uh, that they'll do it just to please you, but they don't really want to do it. That's a that's a kind of thinking that is sabotages your relationship. You if you notice that kind of thinking, you want to say that would be true if he was a girl. <laughs> See if I say <laughs> right, that, right. If, 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 if I say to my wife, you know, I really really want to go to this movie, and she thinks inside, okay, uh, I don't really want to go, but I'll do that to make him happy. The first few times. Uh, that would be okay with her. But then after a while, she's going to say, you know, why do we always do what you want, not what I want? Uh, but, see, men are different. And um, and it, it, some men will whine a little bit if that was to happen again and again and again. And then you can say, well, what would you like to do? And then he says, well, let's go to this game. And you go, well, I like, I like going to those games. Or if you don't, you just say, oh, well, why don't you just go with one of your friends? I don't need to go along with you. And let it be. And, and stand your ground because otherwise he, he, he won't learn to find his masculinity. He'll get whatever he wants, what he needs, as opposed to coming from the masculine side of him, which is what he wants. And ultimately, what does a man want in a relationship? He wants to feel successful in providing for you. And, you know, I live in Marin County, and a woman was just commenting that the men here are very different. They're very needy. And, and I say, yeah, you have to understand when men are needy, you, you as a woman can just say, yeah, you go do that. I'm not really interested in doing that. What I'd like to do is this. <laughs> and you do mm. what you like to do, which is why, you know, some women are afraid I'll sound like a bitch. But that's not being uh, the negative side of a quote, bitch. You know, there's a side where women can be very critical of men, and, and certainly men don't like that. But standing up for yourself and doing what you like to do and not being a mother to him, not fulfilling his needs, but in a sense, let him achieve his goal with you, which is to feel successful and making you happy, to providing support for you. And then ultimately his needs are met because his primary needs uh, are not to feel that you're taking care of him. It's his primary need is to feel uh, the bottom line is to feel appreciated. Look what he's done for you, so you'll naturally feel appreciated. Don't appreciate him if he doesn't do anything for you, but don't punish him either. The thing is, is you create a space for him to be successful so that your appreciation is real. That's one. He did something, and you appreciate it. The second need men have is to be accepted the way they are. And that is, if he doesn't do something that you would appreciate, at least accept that part of him. 
don't punish him for that part of him. Don't withhold for that part of him. But notice, maybe that's not the right guy for you, or maybe you can accept that part of him. Or through acceptance and then appreciating what he does provide, it then brings out more in him. But we cannot seek to control our partners. No woman wants a man to control her. A man doesn't want a woman to control him. And acceptance, just the way he is, is a much bigger issue for men as 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 for women. To be understood is a much greater need for women, is that someone really understands and validates her point of view. You don't have to understand or validate a man's point of view. As a matter of fact, too much of that's not good. Then you start becoming like a parent to him. Instead, he just needs to be accepted. Well, that's the way he is. And you don't have to... You know, if he's upset about something, don't you don't have to listen to the whole thing. You know, just accept that, you know, he's not in a good mood. He'll get through it. That's his thing. Don't go in trying to fix him or help him or whatever. Uh, so there's – because he should find that self-sufficiency within himself. Uh, that strength will grow in him, allowing you to feel more feminine. But when you feel you have to take care of him, you become masculine. You lose it, and he loses his interest in you. So then you've got the basic needs for men is to feel appreciated, to feel accepted, because they're not perfect, nobody is perfect, but accepted as he is. And the third is to feel trusted, that you can depend on him. That's why it's so important that you ask guys to do things for you, because you're depending on him. You're trusting that he'll say yes. You're trusted, trusting that he cares about you. Now this brings us to the dynamic of in every relationship, in my book, Mars Venus on a Date, I do explore in more great detail these five stages of dating. The first mm-hmm. stage is there's this attraction stage. And, you know, he'll feel an attraction for you. You'll feel an attraction for him. They'll feel a connection. Now, you want to be careful as women not to pursue him, but let him pursue you. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation is... Men, because they're more in touch with their female side, they're not as confident. Their fears come up, you know, and so they don't necessarily go after you, introduce themselves to you, start a conversation with you, ask you out on a date, when really they want that. They want that. So many men do not go after the woman they're interested in, so they need a little encouragement, but not for you to go after him, but in a sense... Go after letting him know that if he takes the first step, <laughs> he won't be rejected. And that's just a, another subtlety that, you know, things are more subtle now, but they're also more liberated. In the old days, guys knew, okay, I'm interested in her. You go up and you start talking to her, and she was relieved because she didn't have permission to go up to him. But today, you know, go up to him, you know, can have a conversation, create a situation to show that you're interested in him. And, you know, hey, we can get together sometime. Don't ever ask him out on a date. But basically, we could do this. Maybe sometime we could do that. Oh, it would be fun. You know, what I love to do is this and this. Have you ever done that? These kinds of phrases open a door for him to say, yeah, yeah, I'd like to do that. I'd, I'd love to take you there. And uh, and even, you know, you can be direct. We, we, I love going there. Maybe you'll take me. Would you take me there? You know, you have to find your comfort zone and you're asking some women can ask better than others, but asking is the key because when you ask, you're being very vulnerable. That's mm-hmm. trusting someone. Uh, most most women don't want to ask because they're terrified of him saying no. It hurts when you ask and someone says no, so you want kind of open-ended requests. But as you get to know someone, you want to be specific and asking for what you'd like. Let him know what you'd like and, oh, would you take me? Or would you help me? Or I've got this problem. What do you think? That's great conversation material is what do you think? And then what do you say when he says something? Good idea. That makes sense. <laughs> or you're right. You know, this is – but men love to solve problems. And, of course, you know, women know that sometimes you want to just talk and he starts interrupting you. Don't let him interrupt you. Just say, oh, no, 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 you don't have to say anything. I just want to – just talking to you. I feel so good. It feels good to get close to you. Don't be afraid to share what's going on in your life as long as you give him the messages that it's so helpful, so much, you know, feel so comfortable, feel so safe talking to you. You know, you're an amazing listener. And I just feel better talk being around you. You know, one of the sweetnesses, and one of my daughters, she always says, I sleep better because my husband's home. Uh, I just sleep so much better. You know, anything that makes a man feel like he has a place in your life, 
that he makes a difference in your life, that's what allows him to bond to bond with you. And that's the first stage is attraction. And you could kill the attraction by pursuing him more than he pursues you. Um, second stage is when there's some something going on, then naturally, meaning that you think this might be the one, he's thinking about you, you might be the one, then then that he'd be in a committed relationship with and explore further. Then you tend to shift into stage two where doubts come up. It's normal when you're thinking of getting in a committed relationship with someone to start having doubts. And for men at that point, it doesn't mean you can't pursue the relationship's not going to go further. It just means he's going to have feel a little stress and you're going to feel a little stress. You know, like, oh, well, gee, is this really the right person? One of you starts to feel this doubt. And the way men react to it is they become disconnected to their emotions it's basically they start to withdraw a bit. They lose their attraction for a little bit. A woman starts to feel more emotional. She starts to feel a little more needy at that time. And she might pursue him and say at that moment, what's the matter? Where are we going? Let's talk about the relationship. She says that at times when she's doubting, it's the worst thing to say. Whenever you feel like you want to ask a guy, you know, where are we going? You know, let's talk mm-hmm. about the relationship. If that's the time to not talk about the relationship. It's to give him space, let him pull away for a little while, while you do something to make yourself happy. And you ask yourself the question. Instead of the question is, you know, do you love me? Do you like me? Do you want to be in a relationship with me? You need to ask the question of yourself. Do I like him? Do I want to be in a relationship with him? That's the question, not what does he think. It's what do you think, what do you feel. But before you even get to that place, go do something that makes you happy. You know, this is you never want to come across or be in the situation where you depend on him for your complete level of happiness. And you've got to balance that with I have a life that makes me happy. He then pulls away. He, If you don't pursue him, he, spring, he springs back if you're the right person for him. And he will, he will he'll show his interest again. Maybe he doesn't call for a couple of weeks. Don't punish him. Don't slap his hands. Don't say, why didn't you call me? How could you do that? Even if you feel it, talk to a girlfriend about it. When he calls, say, oh, good, I was just thinking about you. You know, I've had such a good time this week. Let him always see you as a positive being uh, before you show the part of you that, that maybe gets upset about things, wants to ask for more or whatever. You want to start with this place of unconditional acceptance. With that, that that pulls him back in, pulls him back in, and then you have appreciation when he does the right things. So when you get through the doubting stage, then you get into the stage of commitment. And the challenge there, oh boy, are you can challenge because that's when men become real lazy unless you do this, handle this right. He's like feeling mm-hmm. like, okay, now I've won the race, you know, now I can relax. I climbed the mountain, right. now I can <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> right. So it's, it's important at that point to make sure that you don't spend too much time together, that he's having to pursue you. Otherwise, he just kind of waits till Friday night and says, what do you want to do? What would you like to do? He sits around. He doesn't have the energy and motivation to please you anymore because he thinks he's done his job. That's where you really have to begin asking more, asking for more, and be careful not to give more than you're getting because if you give more than you're getting, you'll start to feel resentful. And when you feel resentful, you lose your ability to appreciate what he has to offer. You lose your ability to have unconditional acceptance and appreciation. And he loses his attraction for you. So that's the dance in stage three. Then you get to stage four where you begin to be more emotionally intimate, where you're no longer putting your best foot forward, but you're also sharing more about your vulnerable feelings. And I've written whole books on how to do that. But the art is... If you share things that are like frustration, disappointments, concerns, embarrassments, regrets, you know, uh, painful moments that you've experienced in your life or in your relationship or at that time in your life, what you want to do is make sure to share the good and the bad. And when you share the bad, focus, at least in the beginning stages, never sharing anything which rejects him, which he might feel criticized, he might feel rejected. But start out by sharing things about your life, your work, uh, your frustrations at work, your disappointments, your concerns, your embarrassments, those kind of feelings, and just say to him, oh, I'm so glad to talk to you. I just want to talk about my day, what happened, and 
You know, it, it might sound like I'm asking for help, but really the biggest help I need is I just want to, you know, you to be a sounding board. I can just talk about this, and then you talk about it for like six, seven minutes, then talk two or three minutes about how much, how good your job is, how much you love your job, appreciate talking to him, and go in for a hug. Uh, and he'll be one, he'll be amazing. This woman can be upset about something, and then she comes back and she's so positive. Wow, that's an amazing woman. And she appreciates me for listening. I, I like this. I like this job and I like this woman. So he bonds with you because he feels he's helped you, but he sees that you have the ability to be upset about things, but then come back to positive feelings. The part of you that's upset about things says that I am affected by things. I'm not this Superman that can do everything without feeling anything. But I'm a, I'm a vulnerable person, and you are a vulnerable person. So it's not to fake it. It's to be authentically who you are, but sharing with him the authentic female side of you, which is affected by things. And then, you know, it's not like you're asking for help to solve the problem. You just want to share how you feel, the tender feelings, and they don't have to be big. You know, if you if you suppress all the little feelings, then it has to be some big problem you have to talk about. But if you have big problems, you talk about that. But come from the place at least several times of talking about feelings and see he can witness you going from negative feelings to positive feelings and it's not about him, but he feels he's helped you. And in many of my books I call that the Venus talk where women really go over to their female side and show some vulnerability. Boy, men don't forget it. They love it. They bond with you. But only if you if you shift from the negative to the positive. That's where they feel like, wow, I helped her to do that. Yeah, and I think this isn't always real intuitive either because I think so many of us as women, when we're dating a man, we want to have him be impressed with us and we want to come across as having everything all together all of the time. And I know in my work with women, I'm often asked about this whole vulnerability piece. And I think it's a little tricky, particularly for a lot of women, to be able to show that side of themselves and I like what you've said here so much about this because I think what we're talking about here, both in being able to express our wants, our needs, to show our vulnerability, and allowing for that time and space for a man to step up and be a man, is that we're allowing more or less a sacred space for a relationship to develop and for a man to have that opportunity to step up, be the man that he chooses to be for you, and then for you to decide if he's the right man for you. And if we try to rush that process or we are afraid to ask for what we want or need or we're afraid of showing vulnerability, that sacred space often doesn't exist. Or another thing we do is we give too much too fast too soon. Wonderfully said. You know, I always love doing these <laughs> talks with you. I think you're absolutely brilliant in what you do. Oh, uh, thank you. That's just, so uh, kind. What a compliment from you, John. <laughs> you, you do such a good job. I mean, wow. So, you know, one of the phrases you use is the vulnerability, and I just want to add something to that, which is vulnerability is the ability to be influenced, the ability to be affected by someone. And we often only associate vulnerability with tears or frustration or concerns or worries. That's one aspect of vulnerability. The other aspect of vulnerability is is to be uh, to feel um, happy, to feel appreciative, to be delighted, to feel love. It's like, oh my gosh, you said that. Oh, you were so, I'm so glad you're here. Oh my goodness, that was such a good movie. Oh, we had such a great walk. Oh, the flowers were beautiful. You know, all if this is the the positive side of the feminine vulnerability, because vulnerability is, I need you, and so therefore, if I don't get what I need, then there's some sense of loss. But if I do get what I need, there's this great rejoicing. There's being affected by things. And that's what makes women so attractive to men uh, because it becomes unattractive if it's only the negative side of it. But the positive side is what we, we become most attracted to and what builds our confidence. Then when she shows her vulnerability on the negative side, we can stand there and feel like oh, I'm here for you. But even with that, that's a new thing for men to learn 
how to listen even if he's being criticized or he feels like he's being given a message he's not good enough. So he, he can learn to do that. But first he has to learn to just listen to you being upset or bothered by things that don't have to do with him. And he begins to trust this process of femininity, which is talking about negative feelings, will lead you to feeling positive feelings. Most men instinctively do not understand that. And quite often, because women do instinctively or intuitively understand that, not all women, but many, they assume that when a man is upset, you want to get him to talk about his feelings, and he'll come back to positive feelings. But actually, when men talk about their feelings, their frustrations, their disappointments, and whatever, they go to their female side and makes a woman feel, in a sense, as the listener of that, more masculine. So you feel more like his mother over time. Or he begins Mm -hmm. to feel like you're his mother. The sexual attraction goes away. The interest goes away. So it's really important that, you know, what's good for her is not necessarily good for him. What's good for her is to be able to share things. For him to be able to share, oh, you know, his, his problems, his feelings about the problems and so forth. Don't go deeply into it as a woman. You know, you don't want to encourage that. I know every woman does because she feels if he does that, we'll be closer but actually he'll feel weaker in your presence and lose interest. You feel closer to a man when you go into him is what you think, but actually you feel more close to a man when he goes into you. Him going into you means he listens. He's there for you. He understands you. He cares about you. He does things for you. It, you know, I, I'm being a little extreme here, but that's that's what women really, to come back to femininity That's your relationship with the romantic partner in your life. You can have friends, men who are friends. It can all be like, you know, we're like brothers and sisters. But when you want the romantic relationship, you have to realize what romance is, is woman receives, man gives. It's not woman gives and man receives. It's woman responds to what man gives. And so you would create these situations where where the female side can be nurtured more. And his masculine side can be nurtured more because he feels successful. Yes, and as women, we can even create these opportunities for him to feel successful and for him to have that opportunity to know that what he's providing is very satisfying and appreciated. And like you said, that helps foster these romantic feelings. And I just love that you brought out this other side of vulnerability that The vulnerability is not just being able to express our sorrow or our pain or our frustrations or those kinds of things that might be viewed as more negative emotions, but to show that natural feminine joy and our natural feminine emotions about things that please us or make us happy. And if a man's providing that, that's going to be a big win. We're going to feel good and he's going to feel good, right? Absolutely. That's the secret to this. And it's not its not only what he directly does for you or says to you, it's also, add to that, what he provides. If he brings, if you go for a walk in the garden, he, he, she says, let's go for a walk in the garden. He says, okay, and he drives you there or something, or he's with you. The fact that you're delighted by the garden, or you're delighted by the play, or you're delighted by the ocean, or you went swimming with him, whatever it is that you're doing that you're delighted by, he'll take that personally, like, I provided it. Yes, I created this beautiful day for you. <laughs> you know, a woman says, oh, such beautiful sky and blue skies. A man goes, yes, I brought that to you. So <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's the woman's happiness is the key to it. And and then when he's away from you, this is a key. When he pulls away at times when you're not there, when he's not there, send him little text pictures of, of you being happy. Just a little, you know, how you can send pictures now. Just, mm-hmm. oh, we're thinking of you. I'm here doing da-da-da-da. He sees you happy. Whenever a man sees you happy and he's not actually there, he wants to be with you. He wants to be the one to provide that for you. And since, and you create distance so he can want to fill the distance, cross the distance. You want to encourage time apart so he can miss you. And then you can send little pictures to him. <laughs> he goes, why am I doing this? I want to be with her. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's so great. Yeah, I've noticed with my husband that if we do something or we go out together 
go out to dinner or whatever and I say something like, oh, honey, that just tasted so good tonight. That was such a great choice. I do notice that it's almost like he physically puts his shoulders back a little bit and looks so pleased with himself. It's really adorable. <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, I can see it in myself. I'm so easily, it is, it's manipulated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I'll do more of that. Okay, it's it's just that sense, and and it's it's femininity. It's this is what femininity is the the capacity to appreciate, to enjoy, to bubble up with happiness, and and that's what's required for women today to be if they're going to be on their masculine side. They have to go more to their female side. And for men, it's like we have to step up. If we want to sustain passion and love in a relationship, we have to be more than the men of the past. We can't just be these hard workers who provide money or whatever. We need to be capable of listening, helping, being flexible, responding to women, but not being a yes person, so to speak, but to find that balance of I take care of my needs and then I also give to her what she needs. So there has to be that balance because, you know, it's, women are often afraid of even saying what they want because they don't want a man just doing everything she wants. But when we're talking about what you like, that's the romance. You don't do it all the time. You have to do things yourself you like. But this is what I would like to do next week. This will be so much fun. Will you take me? That's the giving a man the information of what you like. Or you could say, God, there's so many wonderful things to do. I'd like to do this. I'd like to do this. Would you pick? Let him pick. But where you get into a trap is where a guy says, what would you like to do? And you go, I don't know. What would you like to do? That's mm-hmm. the mistake. Don't go into what he would like to do. You can say, well, I don't know right away because maybe you don't know. You, you can say, let's talk about it. You know, Let me think of some of the things I might like. But even better is preparation is such a key thing for successful relationships. And women are the, the masters of preparation. I mean, the, you, know, you, you, dra- you prepare, you think about your clothes, you balance your clothes, you put on makeup. You, women are preparing all the time. <laughs> when it comes to romantic relationship, often a woman might have the thought, well, he should do it all. He should, quote, do it all. But you're the preparer. So how do you prepare for romance? You focus on what are some of the things that I would like to do? And instead of just saying, I want to do this, you say, here's two or three things I'd like to do. I'd like to do this, or I'd like to do this, or I'd like to do that. Would you pick? And then you let him pick, and then his sense of ownership to taking you becomes even greater. Because if my wife says, I want you to take me here, I mean, I'll do that. It'll be a fun thing. But if she says, I'd like to go do this, or I'd like to do this, I'd like to do that, will you pick then you don't have to feel any responsibility for whether he likes it or not. It's solely based upon what you, you know, that he picked it, so you relax, and your job, and you do have a job for romance, not just the guy. Her job is to focus on appreciating whatever happens. Okay, this is, you know, and you do that on the first date. No matter what happens, you'll tend to go, just that we're together, just that you called, it's all fine. (laughs) That's the most (laughs) feminine part of us, which can make good of everything. But it's hard to do that if you're having to plan the date and do all the details and everything, or if it's what he wants. So it's what you like to do, and he does his best to provide that for you. Mm. Wow, there's so much here, John, and I just want to thank you for sharing so generously. Thank you so much for letting me participate. It's been an honor for me, too. Thank you, and thank you to all of you. Thank you, John, and bye-bye for now.